Welcome to the lecture series on VLSI uh, design, advanced VLSI design course. Today, I will discuss about basics of VLSI test. During last lecture, we discussed about the test economics, why test is so important, how much it will cost if you apply uh, a um, sequence of test vector on to your chip and we discussed that, that it has two parts. One part is to generate the, the a compact test set and then you have to apply that compact test te set to each and every chip. And now, when you apply test to each and every chip, it cost you something about 2 to 5 cents per second. That means, if you test your chip say for a minute, it may cost you about 5 dollars, sorry about 3 dollars and hence it is too expensive to, to apply a test for minutes. Therefore, we have to test our chip somewhere uh, between few seconds to minutes. That is the reasonable time, but we have also seen that if you want to apply functional test. So, that means, if you want to apply all sequence of test vectors that may be applicable to a chip, say a chip has n inputs, then there are 2 raise to the power n inputs you can apply. right? And today, uh, today's chip have say hundreds of, of inputs, then it may take billion centuries. Now, you see the difference between the, the exhaustive test and uh, reasonable time uh, in which you can apply the, the, the tests. So, there, there is a huge difference. Now, it is the, the responsibility of test engineers to bring down this exhaustive test to a test set which, is, uh, which can be applied in reasonable time and it gives you almost similar confidence that you got from uh, or, or you, you would have got from the exhaustive test. Okay. So, now here let us look at what are the various methodologies, how I can generate that compact test set that can, that can be applied uh, within few seconds as I, I, I discussed earlier as well that how good your test set should be that depends on how much defect level that you can afford to. Like for example, for automotive uh, applications, the, the kind of defective parts per million manufactured part they are looking for are very, very low. Uh, ideally, they want 0, but here that, that can be, be from somewhere from 1 to 10 uh, defective parts per million uh, manufactured parts are affordable. So, uh, so your, your, your test quality depends on uh, what kind of DPPM figures you are looking at. Now, let us look at the, the uh, test application process. So, you, you develop a compact test set. That compact test set is stored on, on an automatic test equipment, which is pretty expensive device. You apply that, that, that to your device under test, collect the, the test response and then bring back to, to the automatic test equipment. Automatic test equipment also stores the, the correct response of the chip and then it compares with the, with the collected response. If there is a match, the, the device is good. If, if there is a mismatch, the device is bad and then you have to uh, throw that device out. So, this is the, the, the uh, basic test methodology. Now, as I said that we will discuss in this lecture, how we can generate this compact test set that can be applied in reasonable time. So, now look at what we want. Say, I have a circuit under test this circuit under test has say n inputs x 1 to x n. So, now here if I apply the, the these input x 1 to x n, the output say, say it has uh, assume it has single output, then it will evaluate as this function as f of x 1 x 2 x n. 
when there, there is no fault. So, if say there is a fault or, 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 or say there is a defect due to that defect uh, the, the function may not evaluate same as the, this f. So, say, say this evaluates under the, the, the defective condition when I apply same input set x 1, x 2, x n uh, the, the function will evaluate uh, to f alpha. So, now um, the question is if this function the which is uh, defect free and the evaluation of function which is uh, defective if both are same in that case here this input set cannot detect the defect, but if both of these are different in that case you can detect that device has defect. So, now our aim is to find out a set of uh, or, or a sequence uh, a input sequence that can detect all the defects which may possible in the device circuit under test right so so now now, now and and here the size of the, the the sequence should be as small as possible and keep in mind we want to to detect all the defect here i am using a word fault i will explain little bit later why we use word fault so uh, uh, for a while you can can think of that uh, fault and uh, defects are synonym of each other but keep in mind that we have interest only knowing whether a device under test is faulty or defective or it is defect free. We are not interested in diagnosing that what kind of defect or what kind of fault it has. So, it is like here go no go test. So, it will tell us whether the device is defective or device is defect free. So, as I said that I uh, we want to, to uh, develop a test sequence that ca can de detect all the, the, the defect and one of the prime requirement is a input x 1 to x n can be the, the test for a given defect or given fault if it produces different output when there is a fault and without fault. So, that, that means here the function should evaluate in, in, in different way that is the, the, the mandatory requirement. Now, if you look at if I have a circuit with three inputs in order to test that exhaustively what I need I exhaustively apply all the, the possible uh, inputs and check whether I am getting the correct output which we, which uh, I am supposed to get. If I, but here as we discussed earlier that the this exhaustive test set is not applicable hence here. Uh, so, since we cannot apply exhaustive test set our best bet is to target the likely faults or likely defects which may occur during your manufacturing process right. So, this brings us to a point. So, now here if, if I say that, that that here I have to target few likely faults or, 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 or defects let us define the basic terminology. We use three different uh, terms defect, faults and error. Defects are the physical flaw in the, the device which we di discussed earlier that what are the various reasons to get defect while you are manufacturing a circuit. Faults are the logical manifestation of these, these defects. So, that, that means here uh, due to a defect line may look like permanently stuck to logic 0 or, or, or permanently stuck to logic 1. So, that means here the effect is, is uh, such, such that uh, uh, you see the, the, the effect like uh, one line is connected to either power line or ground line. And now here when there is a fault it causes incorrect Lo logical operation uh, 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 and the, then you will get the diff different functional output. So, now, now in, in the presence of a fault you, you will get an erroneous output. So, now the, the so here defect is physical phenomena fault is, is logical ma manifestation. So, now, now this is at the, 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 the device level if we look at little bit higher level of abstraction then we will see the, 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 the fault. So, now, now here so that means if you want to, to generate or develop a very compact test set we have to go 
one uh, abstraction higher, uh, one level of abstraction higher, and and so that means here rather than targeting defect, I should target target faults. So and that is uh, so that means here we are modeling these defects in terms of their manifestation as logical faults. So now here likely the defects uh, depend on the the circuit layout or 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 process control. And all the, these likely defects are, are very uh, difficult to obtain. So, as I, I discussed, then here we go one abstraction higher and, and model the, the, these physical defects as, as log logical faults, and that is known as fault model. So, now here the, the, the question so, what kind of fault model we can have? Let us say the very simple fault model that was conceived way back 3 4 de about 5 decades ago. What this assume is that that here defects cause a single line to be either permanently stuck to logic high or logic low, and that we we call as stuck at zero fault or stuck at one fault. That means here we assume that any line in a circuit, like for example, if I have this AND gate, so it has three uh, lines. So now here any line, this line can treated as by or, or uh, can due to defect this can permanently connect to or, or a logic 0 that means ground or, or permanently connect to your, your power supply right so that that's the the, 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 the sim very simple model we can use now here the, there are two questions first thing is how good this model is and second is what does the this uh, bias so first let's uh, look at how good this model is so let's say you have a, a ttl logic so uh, you have uh, transistors now now here the possible defect may be this transistor is sorted if this transistor sorts then now here what can, can be, be the, the logical manifestation of, of this defect that this transistor is sorted. Then of course, if, if the, 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 this sorts in that case, case here this uh, node will, will always see the, 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 the ground potential. right? So, that the ground potential means here irrespective of what you apply at the, the, the input signal lines always here you will see zero uh, or, or uh, ground potential at line c the hence here i can say that this physical defect transistor stick uh, transistor is sorted we can model as node c or this output line can stuck uh, is uh, stuck to logic zero in the same way here if i say that that, that this input is, is open if this input is, is, is open in that k, k, case here the, the, this uh, transistor would not conduct and then, then here the, the fallout effect of that is uh, you will see node c is always at v c c and, and hence here that you can say that the, that node c is, is, is stuck to logic 1. This is the case when, when in the, the TTL technology look at uh, the MOS technology say in NMOS say uh, first look at if this transistor is uh, sorted. So, if say first look at the, the, this if this transistor is open if this transistor is, is open in that ca case here always you will see that this po point or node C is always at, at V D D. Hence, you the, the this defect you can model as node C stuck to logic 1 and if, if uh, uh, this transistor is, 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 is sorted in that case here the, the, the effect of that would be like here because this is sorted. So, that that means here it, this will look like the node A is always grounded right. If it, it is always grounded then, the, then you, you will see the, the transistor is always conducting and, and hence uh, that, that is say, same as your uh, uh, transistor sort. So, now here this because the actual defect is this transistor is short, but now here I can model that as stuck at 0 fault here at logic uh, at node A. So, now here uh, if you see that there are a couple of uh, defects which can be modeled as same fault. 
Okay. So, now, now here, uh, so now this gives you a big picture that, that here various defects can be modeled as logical faults. Now, good thing about the, the, the logical fault is that we are assuming that every line can stick to logic 0 or, or logic 1 and by and large most of the defects in bipolar technology and NMOS technology we can model as stuck at faults. This, so, this works reasonably well for bipolar and, and NMOS technology. It is less good for CMOS because couple of defects it cannot, uh, a couple of defects cannot be modeled as stuck as at 0 or, or, or stuck at 1 fold, then here we, we have to supplement that model with another fold, fold model that uh, we have to use while we are testing. So, so the, the, this gives you, you, uh, you a sense that, that how good the, the, this model is, whether we can model various defects as faults or, 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 or not. Now, the, the, the question is if I model these defects as, as logical faults, then uh, what it bias. So, now here let us look at a NAND gate, uh, 4 input NAND gate, it has A, B, C, D as input and Y as output. Now, as we say, say that, that here we can model the, the, the defect as, as a logical fault and logical fault assume that any line can either stuck to lo, lo, logic 0 or stuck to logic logic 1. So, now here and keep in mind that here we are assuming single stuck at fault. So, that means here there can be only one fault in the circuit. We will we'll discuss whether it, this assumption is reasonable or not in a minute, but assume that, that, that here uh, there can be only one fault at a time in the circuit. Now, how many faults can be there? So, now we have 5 lines. So, there can be 10 faults because every line can stuck to logic 0 or stuck to logic 1. So, now here like line A can stuck to logic 0, line A can stuck to logic 1, line B can stuck to logic 0, line B can uh, stuck at to logic 1, line Y can stuck to logic 0, line Y can stuck to logic 1. Right. Now, the question is how I test the, the these 10 different faults. Now, here let us say I apply a test uh, some input let us say I apply 1 1 1 1 as input a b c d what it can test if I, I apply 1 1 1 1 then uh, if say if uh, in this circuit if I apply 1 1 1 1 here and say I have stuck at 0 fold here. So, if there is no fault in that case the output would be 1 right if this fault is there what will happen irrespective of what i apply here this point is always at log logic 0 and by application of this 1 1 1 1 i will get output as 1 right so now if you look at the the, the output uh, of the circuit for the, the, the fault free circuit I will get output 0, for faulty circuit I will get output 1 and these are, are distinguishable outputs. Hence, I can say that this uh, in input can detect this, this fault stuck at 0. Right? So, now, now, now the, the, this way, way here we can say that, that this will uh, detect stuck at 0 fault to stuck at 0 fault at uh, line A. Now, what about the the stuck at zero fold at line B? This is B, right? If uh, I uh, uh, again here, uh, if I if there is no fault in the circuit, uh, my my fault fault free behavior is zero. Now, if there is a fault here and uh, we are assuming that there, there can be a single stuck at fault. So, now this node would be this point would be permanently uh, connected to ground. Hence, here the, the, the fault uh, out behavior of faulty circuit would give you output 1. Hence, here uh, again this is also distinguishable. So, that means here we can also uh, detect uh, B stuck to 0. This way, we uh, if, if you work out, we can de also detect C stuck to logic 0, D stuck to logic 0 and uh, Y stuck to logic 1, because he here uh, your fault free behavior is 0 and then if this, this point is 
is stuck to logic 1 and then, then always it will give you output 0 right. So, it is a distinguishable fault free and faulty behavior. So, the, this vector can detect these 5 different faults. Now, if I uh, because I have 10 different faults, if I apply a, a vector uh, 0 1 1 1. Now, wa what what will will happen if I apply 0 1 1 what it can detect. So, if I apply 0 1 1 1 my fault free behavior is 1 right what it can detect if there is a stuck at one fault here. So, in under faulty condition the this input will permanently tie to uh, VDD or, uh, or, or uh, um, logic 1 and hence the, the behavior of faulty circuit uh, will give you output 0. Hence, again this is uh, distinguishable faulty and fault free output. So, this can detect A stuck to logic 1. This can also detect y stuck to logic 0, because here uh, your fault free behavior is 1. So, if y is stuck to logic 0 in that case output would al always be 0. Hence, you can distinguish the fault free and, and, and faulty behavior. So, you can also detect y lo uh, to logic 0. So, this can this vector can detect two more faults. Then in this way if you apply 1 0 1 1 this can detect b stuck to logic 1, y stuck to logic 0, if you apply 1 1 0 1 then this can detect c stuck to logic 1, y stuck to logic 0, if you apply 1 1 1 0 e, e, you can detect d stuck to logic 1 and y stuck to logic 0. Right. So, now here if you look at this how and this covers the, 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 the your, your entire fault list these are the modeled modeled faults. So, that means here uh, if I can can detect all these 10 different faults I can say that my circuit is fault free because I, I, I covered all modeled faults. Now, how many ve test vectors we need? We need only 5 vectors. If you apply exhaustive test set in that case you need 2 raise to the power 4 that means 16 test vectors. Now, there is a huge reduction you have reduced almost to one third. Now, uh, so and this is sufficient test to uh, uh, set to to test all the faults in the this circuit. So, now here if you look at more closely what a it brings you on your plate. See here your test size will reduce to n plus 1 from 2 raise to the power n because here you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 lines, 4 input uh, in, in input lines and, 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 and so, so now, now, now here and you need 5 test right. So, now, now here the, the that number is, is, is 4 plus 1 is, is 5, you do not need 2 raise to the power n right. So, that this is big thing you are converting a problem from exponential complexity to linear complexity and we discussed that, that, that here this, this exhaustive set we cannot apply, but here uh, anything which is linear we can apply. So, that means here if you have a, a circuit with, with say n inputs uh, or that may be 100 in that case, case if I can convert that problem into n plus 1 it is sufficient for, for, for me. So, that means 101 test I, I need to, to apply this. Uh, so, in this case the, the, this fits well. If you have a circuit which is fan out free and single output then again you can say that, that, that here you can, can you need a test size of n plus 1 a test. If there are fan outs in that case here this number will, will slightly increase by, by the, the number of fan outs you have in the, the circuit, but for fan out free circuit again the, the, this relationship holds good. Hence, here we can say and, and if there are fan outs in that case here again the, 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 this will increase by, by the number of number of fan outs and uh, so, so means the big thing the, this brings into our uh, plate is uh, you are converting exponential complexity problem into a linear complexity problem and that is big thing and, uh, and, and that is why here we do not target defects, we target faults which are 
logical manifestation of the defects. As I mentioned in last lecture that defect oriented test is still open problem and some of you may provide some good solution which can advance state of the art. Okay. So, now so now, now here we are we are converting this exponential problem into linear problem. One thing again to, to notice is that in this if you look at it, it closely one test can detect multiple faults or one fault can be detected by multiple tests. So, there is no uniqueness relationship between the test vector and faults. So, this gives us opportunity to reduce the, the num number of number of tests. Now, here our objective is to find out smallest test set that can co cover all the, the faults. So, now here if, if say this vector can, can detect y 0 in that case I can choose that and then, then I, I do not need to target y 0, zero again. So, if this, this vector can detect 5 faults in that case here these, these, these 5 faults again I do not need to, to test. So, now, now here they, there is a non uniqueness relationship between the faults and test vector. So, now here say look at this circuit this is a very popular uh, circuit all of you know this is a NAND NAND implementation of XMOR gate. So, this uh, this fault this circuit has 12 different sites. Now, here another very important thing that I, I would like to uh, bring to your notice is that this fault at stem of a fan out point is different from fault at the, the, the fan out branches, because here they, they, they may have different manifestation. This uh, output though here they, they, these outputs are reconverging, but here this may possible that they, they would not reconverge and they, this, this output may go to some primary output and this fan out uh, branch can, can take you to to some different uh, primary output. So, now they have different manifestations. So, uh, in terms of logical error, hence here we, we, we treat the fault at the input of a fan out point and output of fan out point differently. So, now here we have total 12 different sites, hence there can be, be 24 different 24 di different faults. Now, I uh, mean uh, working in the, 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 the same direction earlier we, we, we discussed that here if there is a stuck at 0 fault uh, uh, at line h and uh, if I, I apply input as say 1 0 in that case will it detect the, the, this stuck at 0 fault? It will because here your fault good circuit value would be be 1 and, and then here faulty circuit value would be 0 and hence the, the, this can, can detect this particular fault. So, now uh, I mean here we by modeling these faults we uh, as a single stack at fault we can generate a compact test set and we have seen that uh, we, we can reduce the, the problem from exponential problem to, to the, uh, the linear complexity problem. So, the, 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 the so first fault model that was given way back uh, about 5 decades ago is the single stack at, at fault model that, that assume that only one net can stack to logic 0 or logic 1 at a time. And so, now here the, the number of faults that you can have is twice the number of nets that the or number of lines that you have in your, your circuit that 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 is linear. And that is why we, uh, we are converting the problem in, in linear complexity problem. Now, we can argue that, that, that how reasonable this assumption is. Do you think that uh, always we, we can have only one fault in the circuit or one defect in the circuit, though multiple def de defect can manifest as the, the, the same fault as well. So, that, that may not be reasonable. 
So, now what is reasonable? Reasonable is that there can be multiple defects, multiple defects may result into multiple faults. Now, you need to target uh, multiple stack at fault rather than single stack at fault. Now, if you look at the, 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 the number of multiple stack at fault, if assume that there are n number of single stack at fault or uh, in, in the circuit or n number of lines or n number of, of, of lines or nets you have in the circuit out of the this n, n line. Now, here any line can give you a, a may be, be the fault free. So, that may be fault free or that may, may, may stuck to, to logic 0 that may, may stuck to logic 1. So, that any line can be, be uh, in 3 states fault free stuck to logic 0 stuck to logic 1. Now, if there are n lines how many total co uh, permutations can be, be there in the circuit that would be 3 raised to the power n. The out of these 3 raised to the power n instances only one instance would be fault free when all the lines are fault free all other instances are faulty instances. So, now here the, the number of faulty instances would be 3 raised to the power n minus 1. So, that that means that there can be 3 raised to the power n minus 1 multiple stack at fault in the circuit. Again here this problems this problem converts to the, the, the exponential problem and all these 3 raised to the power n minus 1 fault may not be, be targeted. But people observed that if you because of known unique relationship between uh, your fault and, and uh, test vector, you are likely to detect large number of multiple stack at faults. So, in other word if I say test all or, or 100 percent single stack at fault I am likely to detect 80 85 percent multiple stack at faults using the same uh, test pattern that gives us big relief. And so, now uh, this is the standard practice in the, the, the standard uh, in the industry that they are using single stack at fault model and they, they though that uh, can cover large number of multiple stack at, uh, stack at fault. Now, the, the, so this is one of the, the, the very popular and common fault model industry uses. As I said that this single stack at fault model can can model most of the, the defects in TTL, NMOS and large number of, of defects in CMOS. There are some faults which are like transistor open uh, and, and, and transistor sort. So, so, transistor stuck open stuck sort fault which are really not modeled uh, by single stuck at fault in CMOS logic. So, that means here we have to, to, to test for those faults as well and then here another fault model was given for, for those kind of faults which are which are not covered by, by single stuck at fault are the, the, the transistor stuck open and, and stuck sort faults. Then other kind of circuit that we have in uh, practice are memory. Now, if you look at memory, memory does a very specific operation or job. What it does is it stores value what you want. So, logic 0 or logic 1 it retains that value until you would like to rewrite it. right? So, what you want is that if you would like to write 0 it should write allow you to write 0. If you write 1 it should allow you to write 1 and it should retain that value until you rewrite that. So, these are so because this does or this performs a limited functionality. So, rather than go going for stuck at kind of fault which is very appropriate for uh, random logic we go to functional fault model and, and then, the, then here we, mo we model those faults as like whether memory is able to write value 0 or not, whether memory is able to, to write value 0 to a, a, a cell or not 
and whether it is able to retain that value or not. So, these, these are some of the, the, the functional fault model that we use and this reduces the, the, the complexity tremendously and hence the, these functional fault models are being used for memory. Other kind of circuit that we may have in practice are, are the programmable logic arrays. In that means other than stuck at, at, at faults, there may, may there are some other faults which may appear which are unique to PLA. Those are like here, there can be, be, be a cross connection between the two lines. So, so cross point or, or, or bridging faults. The circuits like, like processors perform many operations, but still it is uh, the set is limited. Like it uh, a processor is supposed to execute a couple of instructions, those are finite in number and the behavior of each and every instructions is well defined. So, there, so now, now here what we can do is rather than, than going for, for stuck at fault model, we may target the functional functional fault model that means here how instructions are being being executed with whether it executes that that uh, correctly or or not there are some faults which are like uh, which doesn't uh, lead to the malfunctioning of the, the the circuit if you don't care about the frequency of operation but they result into malfunctioning of the circuit if you 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 test at certain certain frequency that means here uh, you, if you operate your circuit at slower frequency your circuit may work perfectly fine but if you if you operate at the, the design frequency your circuit may not be able to op operate at that frequency and there are there are couple of fault model which were developed for to test for such kind of performance oriented fault and though those are co popular model are transition delay fault model and path delay fault model. Other class of circuit that we have in practice is analog circuit. Unfortunately, till today we do not have any fault model like single stack at fault model which was given for digital circuits. By and large the, the an, an, an analog circuits are tested. Uh, against specifications, though there were attempts and then people developed some alternate test method that, that by observing some of the, the, the uh, derived parameters of the, the, the circuit and which are uh, which uh, reduces complexity significantly. So, these are the, the various common fault model we, we use. Single stack at fault model is, is, is uh, pretty common. So, most of the industry do test their circuit for all single uh, is, is stuck at fault and delay delay faults and of course uh, analog circuits are are, are are tested for the, the analog faults and memory me, me, memory is is always tested um, uh, for for the, the using functional fault model okay now here let's concentrate on the, the single stuck at fault fault model which is uh, pretty common and uh, all the circuits are tested for, for single stack at, uh, at fault. Now, the, the, the question is how I should generate test for each and every fault, each and every single stack at fault in the, in the, the circuit. So, if you have n line in the circuit or n net in the, the circuit, you, you may have 2 n number of faults. Now, here the question is how I should generate generate that test. So, uh, say you have this uh, circuit which we, we discussed earlier a 4 input NAND gate A, B, C, D are the, the, the input. If I say I have stuck at 0 fault here. Now, what you demand uh, means how you can detect that. If I, as we discussed that if I apply 1 1 1 1 as input here, always I will get faulty and uh, distinguishable faulty and fault free behavior at the output and hence you, you can detect that, that fault. But now I have just a reverse problem of, of the, the earlier one. Now I have fault at my hand and I want to find out 
a test vector that can detect that particular fault. What I, 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 I need that uh, my basic requirement is that whatever input test input I apply that should produce distinguishable faulty and fault free output. So, now here this net is connect, is uh, stuck to logic 0. Will it ever produce distinguishable output if I apply 0 here? It will never pro, uh, produce irrespective of what I apply at B, C and D. Hence, this is ruled out. Now, what I should apply here? If I apply 1 here, in that case there is a possibility that it may produce distinguishable fault free and faulty output depending on what I apply at B, C and D. If I apply B as, as 0 in that case it will never produce distinguishable fault free and, and, and faulty behavior. right? In both of the cases it will produce output as what would be that, that output? That output would be so, I apply 1 0 1 1 and our output would be 0 right. So, in, in both of the cases it will it will be, be 0 faulty and fault free behavior. So, now what I want that the, the line which is stuck to some uh, logic value 0 or, or 1 I should have at least inverse or, or opposite value to that. So, now if it is stuck to logic 0 I have to have 1 if it is stuck to logic 1 then I have to have 0 right. And as I said that this may potentially propagate the, the, the or, or may produce faulty and for, or distinguishable faulty and fault free behavior at the output provided that I assign the, the another input or side input to this gate as non controlling value. So, what is the, 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 the controlling value of a gate? The value which always determine the output. So, if I apply 0 value to any of the input output would be determined by that out output would always be, be 1 right irrespective of other values. So, now I have to apply non uh, controlling value that what does that mean that if I apply non in, uh, controlling value to other inputs that means here output would be determined by this input only right. So, if I apply opposite value then, then here out, output would be, be, be distinguishable. So, that means here I have to have 1 1 and 1. So, what it can uh, tell you that if I want to detect a, 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 a fault here what should be my, my test vector? First I should have different value or opposite value to, to the, 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 the faulty value at that faulty site and other inputs must be at the non controlling value right. This is the basic basic criteria based on that we have to generate test for each and every uh, fault. Now, there are two mechanism one uh, is the, the, the algebraic way. Algebraic way uh, is based on, on the, the Boolean algebra. So, if you look at Boolean algeb uh, uh, algebraic manipulation say if, if you have a circuit with n input x 1 to x n then output of that, that, that circuit would be f would be given as f of x 1 to x n right. This may be x 1 x 2 plus x 2 x 3 plus x 1 x 2 x 3 plus x 3 x n something like that. Now, always I can decompose the, the this uh, output or this function in, in sub functions with respect to given uh, with respect to an input. Say I, if I, I, I guess all of you know the, the, the this Shannon's expansion theorem. What it says that, that if I want to decompose the, the this uh, function with respect to x1, I can write that x1 dot f of when 1 x2 x3 x n. So that means here this function is the the, the out, uh, output of the 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 circuit when x1 is equal to 1 plus x1 can be 0, right? So x1 bar dot f of 0 x 2 to x n right. So, that means here this function would be output of the, the, the circuit when x 2 is x 1 is 0 right. So, that, that this way I can, I can decompose a, a circuit. What I want is that if there is a uh, I want to have distinguishable faulty and, and fault free behavior. Now, depending on, on your, your, your fault location and, and, and uh, nature of fault 
in order to test as I said that we have to apply the, the opposite value to the faulty value at the fault site. Right? So, now, now if fault is, 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 is stuck to 0 in that case, case here the, the faulty behavior would be given by this one right? and in order to test that here I, I have to apply the, the, the opposite value that means, I have to apply 1 right? then your fault free behavior should be, be, be given by this one. right? So, now, now here what I want this should be distinguishable that means, here the XOR of this function and this function should be should evaluate to 1 and that XOR operation is defined as Boolean difference. So, that means, what I want the, is, is that here this Boolean difference must evaluate to 1 and I have to apply opposite value of the, the, the faulty uh, value at the fault site. So, now, now here if I say that line uh, say x i is stuck to so uh, stuck to logic, logic 1 in that case here. Uh, so, if x i stuck to logic logic say 1 in that case here I have to have opposite value right. So, that means here x i should be 0 and del f upon del x i this should all uh, also evaluate to 1. What I can say is that here your x i bar dot del f upon del x i should evaluate to 1. This is the, the, the condition to detect x i stuck at 1. If x i stuck at 0 in that case what I want? that x i should put to value 1 and the it should produce the distinguishable faulty and fault free output. So, that means, here del f upon del x i must be 1. So, uh, what I expect is x i dot del f upon del x i this should evaluate to 1. This gives you the condition to generate test vector algebraically. So, let us look at example. So, these are the, the, the two conditions that, that, that I, I have already discussed. Now, let us look at the, the, this uh, circuit. So, the, the output f can be given as x 1, x 2 plus x 3. Now, you have to you, you, you have to determine uh, or um, detect stuck at 0 fault at x 2. So, now what should be, be, be the condition? First thing is x 2 should be, be uh, should be assigned with value 1 if it is stuck to 0 if uh, and it should be, be, be assigned as value 0 if it, if this net is stuck to logic 1. Now, you so now and then here that fault effect should be propagated to, to the primary output. What are the conditions that Boolean dif difference with respect to x 2 should evaluate to 1. Right. So, that means, here this x 1 what what is the, the Boolean difference with respect to x 2 that is x uh, if you put x 2 equal to 1 in this if this will evaluate as x 1 plus x 3 right. And if you place uh, uh, x 2 equal to 0 in that case this will evaluate to x 3 right. So, this, this would be x 3 x or with x 1 plus x 3 that will give you x 3 bar x 1 this should evaluate to 1. When this can evaluate to 1? Uh, this can evaluate to 1 only when x 1 must be 1 and x 3 must be 1. This gives you the propagation criteria. And so, now if you want to uh, gen generate a test for stuck at uh, x 2 stuck at, at 1 in that case here x 2 must be 0. right? So, now, now here x 1 must be 1, x 2 must be 0 and x 3 must be 0. right? This gives you the, the, the detection condition for stuck at 1 fault at line x 2. Now, uh, for uh, stuck at 0 fault x 1 must is, uh, be, be 1, x 2 should be, be, be a positive value. So, that means, here that should be 1 and, and uh, output must be, uh, so x 3 must be 0. So, this is the, the detect, detection criteria. What if, if this uh, x or, or this uh, your uh, Boolean difference is 0. That means, that your circuit is not able to transfer the fault effect to the primary output. What does that mean? That this input uh, or, or uh, this signal is not contributing in making a decision 
right. So, that means, this input is, 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 is a redundant input. Hence, th those folds are, are known as redundant folds. So, now this methodology will either give you the test vector or, uh, uh, or it will say that this uh, fault is redundant fault and now here you do not need to, to test for that, because here anyway uh, the, that fault may not have any implication in, in your, your functioning of the, the your, your circuit. Hence, even if that fault is there, the, the, there you are ok with that. So, now this will give you the, the, the faulty uh, so test vector or identify fault as redundant fault. Hence, I can say that this method is, is, is a complete method this can identify fault as, a, a, as a, a testable fault and give you the test vector or identify fault as, as untestable fault or redundant fault. So, now we compute two different parameters one is known as fault coverage another is, is known as, as fault efficiency. Fault coverage is defined as the number of detectable faults divided by the, the, the total number of faults. Right? So, say you, you have total 1000 faults and, and 990 faults are detectable, but here 10 faults are not detectable in that case, case here your, your fault coverage would be something 990 divided by 1000 into 100 that becomes your 99 percent. Why they, they, they because here 10 folds are, are redundant they are coming from the redundancy in the, the circuit. Sometimes you have a redundancy because of ease of manufacturing or, or because of ease of design like for example, if you, you de design a 4 bit adder you do not design that 4 bit adder with 3 uh, full adder and 1 half adder. Generally, we, we, we design with 4 full adders. So, that means, here one of the half adder is redundant in, in that, that, uh, that design, but because of because VLSI favors the regularity and hence we, we prefer to have four full, full adders and that, so that redundancy may, uh, uh, so due to that redundancy we get lower fault coverage. We define another term that uh, or metric to, to evaluate how good our test is that is uh, referred as fault efficiency. Fault efficiency is defined as total number of detectable faults divided by total number of faults minus total number of redundant faults though, though those you identify uh, as redundant faults. So, like here now in this example we say that 990 faults are detectable and 10 faults are, are identified as redundant faults. So, that means here this is 1000 minus 10 multiplied by 100 this gives you the 100 percent fault coverage. So, that means here we are able to detect all the faults which are are potentially uh, which are which may cause small functioning of the, the the circuit and this boolean difference method or algebraic method can give you always guaranteed 100% fault efficiency now why why i define these two metric why not only one metric what additional information my another metric gives you fault the difference between the fault coverage and fault efficiency gives you how much redundancy you have in the circuit. So, now we identify the kind of redundancy. So, now in the circuit and then if it exceed beyond the, the limit certain kind of redundancy is admissible to us say say may, may be um, 10 percent redundancy in the circuit may be admissible. So, now if redundancy is below 10 percent it is ok. Otherwise, test engineer has to 
report the, the, this information to the, the design engineer say that yeah look your, your redundancy in the, the circuit is 30 percent are you okay with that if he is not okay then then he has to resynthesize his circuit and and bring down the, the redundancy in, in in the circuit so again this is the, 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 the another task of test engineer to identify redundancy in the circuit and report it back to the test design engineer uh, if it exceeds beyond, beyond the, the, the certain limit or, or beyond the, the tolerance tolerance limit. As I said that, that here due to certain reason like here uh, do, uh, means in order to minimize the, 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 the uh, propagation time or, or delay of the circuit or uh, if, if it results into, into regular structure here we deliberately introduce redundancy uh, sometimes in the in the circuit so this is the the algebraic way to to generate test uh, set now the problem uh, here is always we need to do boolean manipulation and boolean manipulation is not feasible for fairly large design which has say several hundred million uh, gates so this approach is, is 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 not scalable in order to 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 have scalability here we uh, we have to go for alg uh, algorithmic uh, methods and some of the algorithmic methods were proposed in the, the the literature which are based on the past sensitization algorithm those were d algorithm uh, which was first complete algorithm given by roth from ibm in 1966 then there were improvement on that the, the, that method and uh, the, the another um, algorithm which is known as PODEM and uh, w that was given by, by uh, Goyle from IBM again in 1981. Then uh, and this algorithm uh, PODEM was almost 10, 100 times faster than D and then the, the another faster variant was developed by, by Professor Fujiwara from Osaka University at that time that was known as fan in 1984. So, these are, are the, the three basic uh, algorithms uh, and, and most of the, the, the today's CAD tools are, are uh, largely based on either PODEM or, or, or fan algorithm. Then there were, were say, several improvements they, uh, in, in which they try to, to support these algorithms by learning from the, 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 the circuit and those are, are two of the popular algorithms are Socrates and, and, and Spirit. All these uh, algorithms are based on path sensitization. So, this path sensitization based algorithmic method to generate test we will cover in the next lecture. I with this I complete this lecture here. Thank you very much for patience for listening.